Yeah, so I've been trying to replace my REST environment with, uh, with Emacs, basically trying to use Emacs as my, as my major Rex client. And it turns out to be easier than I thought. Um, let's see. So let's give this a title. Let's call it um, REST client. Then from there, let's uh, basically, what do we need in the rest client? I need to make requests and um, make requests and um, ability to to choose environments. Basically, so let's just have something simple for a set. So let's have a get request. So we can, um, I have an HTTP bin running on my localhost, so I can just go there and let's say have to. So let's have a get to HTTP. Local host and um, it, 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 right? So if I run this, everything should be fine. Good. So let's try to make it a better looking endpoint. So let's make this pretty and uh, oops. Uh, let's get something meaningful. I think slash JSON should give us something meaningful. Yeah. Okay. If you want XML, the same thing. That's very useful for just testing the rest request. Okay, so now let's move on. So the next thing we want to do is probably we want to make some posts and get and whatnot, but all those ones are very straightforward. Uh, let's call JSON again. So we have a JSON request. And yeah, one quick thing before I continue going. So I have an um, I have an helper function that not an helper function. Yeah, I have an helper function that opens uh, that opens my JSON in a new uh, the old Babel in a new buffer because of JSON, because sometimes I can have a very large JSON and I want to filter, uh, and I want to sort of like use JQ in a more interactive way. So I found this plugin called Council JQ, which works very fine. So I bound it to, I think, Ctrl C, Ctrl J for me. So you can you can just go through it. If you're not sure of the keys, you can go like this and you get the keys and you, you start navigating from there. So start, uh, slideshow. And we get something if you're not sure of the keys you're looking for you can do this and then uh, we can go there into the title and things like that and you get your values dot slides and we can keep going as well slide at zero dot title something like that so which works quite well and if you press return you get the value so i don't really need this one for now yeah so let's continue with our json um so this way get request and um, yeah so let's let's just assume that we we want to we want to make a couple of requests. So let's let's call this one. Uh, um, let's just call it uh, get. Uh, let's just go to get entity and let's have another request. Let's call it first entity, which is basically going to be something like this. And um, other than it's just going to have a, a body inside of it. So let's change this get to post and uh, oops, uh, have a mistake for me. Uh, what, what happened just now? I'm actually not interested in the, in the link. Okay, good. So let me do that again. Um, first, um, so let's, let's call it anything actually. Um, basically, what this one does is that you get the result of anything you post into it. So if we, if we have something there, uh, I can also open this one so that I can view it somewhere better. So let's just send a JSON body. So let's add content type. Um, so JSON, and let's put in a JSON button so that just say sample, sample, or oh, let's just call it some value, something like that. Yeah, so that should be fine. So if I run this one now, let me get rid of this one for the distraction. So if I run this one now, we should get this kind of data we're sending. That's how it works. Anyways, so that where I'm going is that um, you can see we are repeating the host names in multiple places, so we probably want to get this one out into a variable. So let's get this out into a variable. Let's call it host for now. Let's do the same thing here. Let's call it host. Then let's have a, let's have a section before that. Let's just call it variables. Uh, yeah, let's call it variables for now. So inside here, let's have. Uh, I actually found that a trick that's kind of interesting. So you can simply have something like this. Um, you can have a name. Uh, let's call it OS, for example, and I'm just giving it a value. So now here's the here's the value we're giving it, right? Well, let's call it localhost um, because you have to reassign it. 
Now, all I just have to come here is put a var and call host equals to localhost, and uh, it's going to work. So if I run this, now everything should be fine. As you can see, it still works as expected with the host request. And um, just for you to be sure that it actually works, let me, uh, yeah, so it's, it still works. Uh, the same thing for, uh, let me get rid of the result. I don't really care about it. Um, I believe if I do the same thing as well, so if I have var host equals to localhost, so it's basically it's going to pick this value actually. So this is what, what we're actually sending over. If I run this, it should work as well. You see everything works fine. Okay, so let's go a bit further. Let's make the host a bit more dynamic. So let's have, uh, we can have, let's have environments. Um, then the environment, let's just um, find, basically be able to toggle between multiple hosts, for example. So let's have uh, something like a, maybe a Python script. Um, it should work out. Yeah, so let's just say local equals to something like this. Um, let me open this one a bit bigger. Yeah, so let's have local and I just have host. Take out the same value as this one. So let's copy this one over. And let's have prod as well to be the same value. Um, it's basically a TP bin, so I can just put it right here. So let's put HPS there. And um, let's just put an if condition. So if env, or oh, let's just say if env is uh, it's prod. If it's prod, then return uh, prod.get. Let's have another, let's assume we can have another variable called key. Otherwise, return local.get key, for example. So this is just a, something very basic that can work with multiple environments, right? So uh, let's format this one. Um, it could be XH, I believe. Compromitters. Oops. Um, yeah, that should be fine. So under C, under C. Now we have we have this instead of that. Um, so let's run this to just see the value we're going to get. Uh, so let's have some default variable. Uh, var. Let's have env to default to local and uh, key to default to os. <laughs> os is the only key we have anyway. So let's run this one. You can see we have the value local. We say eight eight. Now let's do something a bit more interesting. So instead of this localhost, we don't need this one anymore. So let's get rid of this one. Make this an environment and uh, let's default this one to local. Then we can put some some docs in here that uh, set the default environment. Default environment should be one of um, local. Uh, uh, production, something like that. I think you call it prod, right? Uh, yeah, should be one of local or prod, something like that. So now we have a variable called env. So now all I just have to do, oh, let me, let me use environment just for clarity. Then let's change this one to the variable environment. Now watch this. So if I, if I control C twice and I get this, right? So let me change this one to another environment. So let's call this prod. And if I control C twice there, eh? You see, we get the we get the value as well. So this one essentially became become a, a dynamic function that we can use in an environment. So if you just want to toggle the other environments, just come up here and you have your environment. So let's change this back to local. So if I run this, you can see we get the locals right. So let me get rid of this one. I don't really need it. Now let's go on to do more interesting things. So now let's give this a name. Let's call this uh, get environment, for example. I think that's fine. Then let's come all the way to our request now. So we can now do something like this. We can now say host equals to get env host. That's interesting because it actually, it's just like a function, right? So whichever one you define gets the value passed into it. So in this case, we're going to get the key for host as we've defined, as you can see. Um, so get an host, then uh, then the 
uh, oh, sorry, get M should be low. Uh, so uh, I put the environment first, right? So let me reverse it so that I can make the, the key is the more important one. So the environment can be optional, right? Um, yeah, so yeah, so now if you come here and you just have um, get environment for uh, let's call it um, host actually. So now it's going to default to this environment. So if you run this now, we should, everything should still work fine. Perfect, right? So if you go into this place and change it to a prod, if I run, oh, sorry, if I run this now, as you, uh, let me see, oops, uh, something, you come in one second. Yeah, this actually prod. Yeah, 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 because I'm getting a JSON endpoint. So let me let me let me go into a more obvious endpoint like anything, for example. So if I run this one now, uh, we should get yeah, as you can see, this is actually the one from HTTP being right. So if I if I change this to local down, I run this, I should get the local version you can see. So exactly, so that's it. It's that simple. So toggling just this variable and you get your environment set. One interesting thing you can do again is that because this is two variables, so you can have, uh, you can actually, this is just a default value, right? So you can come in here and actually specify the environment as well. Just override it, the default behavior, right? So local, you should still get the local value. And if I go back to prod, I believe we should get, now get the production value, right? As you can see, so it makes it very interesting, right? So with this, you've already done what most uh, REST clients are already doing for you in, in keeping values in the environment. And bear in mind that this is a Python script, meaning that this can actually be written values from files and all that. So you get the idea. So now you have your environment, you have your environment variables, and um, you can now start making requests. And what's interesting is that you can, you can document it properly. So let's just say, uh, hypothetically speaking, so you're trying to get, uh, get anything. <laughs> From HTTP being something like that, and uh, post anything to HTTP being exactly. So this one as well, we just have to replace it. And uh, oh, let me get rid of the awesome prod now. Run this one now. We're good to go. You can see this local once again. So so I just have to do the same thing here, and I'm and I'm fine, right? So I just get this one over. So let's place and um, exactly. So let's post this one now. You can see it works out of the box. And if I need to just change the environment, all I have to do is um, come here. If I want to change it globally, come here, change this one to prod, and we're good. And if I run this again, we should get the value from the production environment, right? As you can see the difference. <laughs> then, and if you only want to override this one, you just come in here and change the environment. So I can override it now and just call this one. And now it's back to local environment, right? So yeah, it's really, really kind of interesting. And um, all this can actually be more, basically everything you need. This is how I structure my REST environment right now with Emacs. So it makes things very easy. And then if you need to probably have something else, you can, you can have something else like um, authenticate the user. Yeah. and. Um, since you have the whole power of ellipse, you can do anything. Let's say you want to test basic auth, for example. Let's say, uh, um, let's say a little bit user with basic art. So let's have another code block. Um, let's have another HTTP block, right? So um, the same thing, let's use the same environment. Uh, sorry, uh, one second. Oh, sorry. I don't need this one anymore. Let me get rid of it. Then um, I can come into and grab the host value from it. Then, ah, sorry. So I guess it does this. Exactly. So all I just have to do is, um, so now let's just test the basic auth endpoint. I think it's just um, slash basic auth. Then the user and password that you want to give. So let's just have a, host as well. So let's have a get um, the host. Um, sorry, basic auth using password, right? Basic auth. Then we have, let's just say, some user, some pass. So if you call this now, by default, things shouldn't work. 
Oh, they, I think it defaults to prod. We don't need we don't need this to default to prod anymore. So let's go back to environment. So let's call this one. You can see. So let's run this now. Unauthorized, right? Because we don't we're not setting any authorization. So let's just put an authorization ad that there. Authorization. Now we need the base for basifying coding of the user and password to have the right value. Just to show that it's work, let's put some value there and let's see if it's going to work. Of course, it doesn't work. So you can see we can simply say so we can simply have something like this and just call it um uh, let's have a new source actually. So um source and let's just make this one an Emacs slips very straightforward. So let's call this one out. Ah oh, sorry, name it should be name. Out yeah. Now so basically I think there's a there's a function called um base 64 something yeah encode string and uh, you can just put the username and password some user some pass of course all this one can be dynamic i'm just you you just get the idea right so if i uh, control c control c we get this one back if i execute this um should get the value right so now we don't need the result i can get rid of it so now all i just have to do is come here and say you are also equals to this and let's say odds equals to let's call the name or let's call it token here yeah? equals to odd right so if you come here now you can simply say authorization and put art there does it work oh sorry one more thing basic basic art and it should be fine uh oh i called it token sorry yeah and that's it so let's make it pretty and we should be fine And that's it we get a valid json so that's the whole idea like it's quite quite interesting what you can do with uh hog modes like you're like really pouring out your mind as you're working on it and you have your you have all your documentation there and there's nothing to miss and uh, of course this is just a rough one so <laughs> you can see the possibilities of working uh using emacs and uh og barbell uh as your rest thank you very much